we're going to look at incident response from a very simplistic level. Okay. Many times you see within the commercials, you see all on the internet, and there's so much information about cyber hacks, cyber hacking there, cyber hacking there. One thing that we want to do is make it very simple. We're going to go through what it looks like from the process of incident response, break it down, and I'm going to just give you a little bit of firsthand information as it concerns this. Come join us here at Struggle Security. Hi, my name is Gabriel Agarucci, and welcome back to another Struggle Security YouTube video where we are normalizing struggling in cybersecurity. And let's just get right into it. I want to talk today about the subject of incident response, right? A lot of times incident response, when you think of that process, you're giving a certain acronym. It's pronounced PICAROL, and it stands for preparation, identification, containment, eradication, recovery, and lessons learned. PICAROL. But even before I get into the subject, if this is your first time here, I want you to hit the subscription button and then hit the notification bell. And I want you to come back for more and more of this type of content if you're enjoying it. So here, incident response, Pickerel. So let's just kind of break this down. I want to first go over the acronym. I want to tell you about my own personal experiences as it concerns uh, being an incident response consultant and responding to actual incidents in customer environments. So we're starting with the P, which stands for preparation. What does that really mean when you're talking about incident response? This is all the stuff that you do before an incident is declared or before something bad happens. This is setting up your network security architecture in the way where you're able to detect if something bad happens. So say for instance, you're talking about a Windows device. These devices have Windows event logs or they have other protocols and other things that they're talking to say, hey, something bad is happening to me, right? Something was executed on my machine. And many times also getting even deeper down into the technology, you have what you call your EDR solutions, your endpoint detection and response solutions. People like McAfee or or uh, Splunk might have different software that's installed on devices. And what happens is that this software that's installed is called an agent. And this agent speaks back to whatever the security operation center is doing to monitor the bad things that are happening in that environment. Okay. So it's checking to see who has logged into different devices. Particular programs are executed or executables come onto host. Or say, for instance, if there is somebody who installed some unneeded or some unpermitted software onto a device. That's what's happening to your preparation stage is that all of these devices in your digital ecosystem are speaking and they're telling your security people if something bad or something bad is happening to that system. Then you get to your identification phase. When you want to identify the bad thing that's happening, that is probably the most important thing. And when you want to do this, you want to have your monitoring being able to detect when the bad thing happens. Oh my God! Wow! Say for instance, you are somebody who is working in an organization and you are just working as, say for instance, a desk clerk or somebody that works in help desk or somebody that works in finance. Everybody pretty much within an enterprise environment has access to email. If you download something, some type of phishing email, you can have the possibility of downloading something bad that can affect the whole organization. And this is what happens during the identification phase is that you declare whether an incident happens or whether an incident is not happening. Many times, if you have the incident happening, then you move on to the next phase, which is containment. So is this something that will spread out to all the, or all the other assets and all the other hosts within the organization? Many times where a person like myself, an incident response consultant in many cases, will come in and help an organization contain the bad that is happening. I'm coming in to help them to say, hey, we want to cut off remote access to whatever C2 server the bad guys have access to. We're replacing hosts, we're replacing domain controllers, we're replacing equipment to make sure that the things that were compromised do are not still present in the environment so that it doesn't affect different places in the environment. Hmm. This is something that happens even if you think about medicine. Say, for instance, you get sick and you have some type of virus within your body. One thing that doctors do is that they try to give you medications. They try to prescribe certain things so that that doesn't spread out to the rest of your body. Many things are done in this, this case, but just want to give you a quick introduction. Now we're going to eradication. You're kicking them out, right? You're cutting off so say, for instance, you find what the C2 server IP address is. You're using your firewalls, you're using your routers, you're using anything that's internet facing to block whatever that IP address is. That might not be the only issue that you have there, but that is one of the things that could be done during the eradication phase is to cut off complete access of the bad guys to getting into getting back into your environment, removing things like backdoors, looking for those other internet facing assets 
or changing configurations within your Windows Active Directory environment to make sure that it cuts off any outside access or remote access by vendors. Many different things are done within the eradication process, but it's pretty much saying, hey, we wanna take the bad guy out and we wanna make sure the bad guy doesn't get back in. When you get to the recovery phase, that's the process of rebuilding the system with more and more security controls and more and more security hygiene in place. So it's almost like a restructuring with security in mind. That's recovery and lessons learned is to go, go through the process again. Say, hey, we went through preparation, identification, containment, eradication and recovery. What did we do wrong? What did we do good? What do we need to increase? And maybe what do we need to change about our whole incident response process? This is something that many times consultants like myself would do with an organization to make sure that the next time they'll be prepared when the bad guys come. So that, right, that's the whole pickerel. Hopefully that wasn't too much information, but that was the whole incident response process. From personal experience, um, as an incident response consultant, many times I'm coming to the environment and helping to give the customer the knowledge and work with them to make sure that they know that, hey, the bad guy is there, the bad guy is in, but we're gonna do everything possible in order to minimize the damage. We wanna get them back into a good standing. We wanna get them back to the point where they feel secure from a digital perspective. That's really the primary thing. So many times we come into the, to the environment, it starts off with a call. The customer will call us and say, hey, we are noticing this. We have seen a ransomware note on one of our systems, or we have noticed that there's a lot of data exfiltration happening within our environment. There can be multiple things and they're pretty much describing the pain that they're going through as it concerns this incident. And they're bringing us in in order to help them go through this whole pickerel process. That's something that's very important is having those soft skills. There's many times where the customer has never went through an incident before. Many security professionals are not privy to what happens during an incident response engagement. And a lot of times people are running around with their hair on fire. And many times as a consultant, it's there that we pretty much put those fires out and really get them focused on getting back to a good standard from a cybersecurity perspective. So that's kind of some of my experience. I probably get into this subject more and more with more and more content on this subject as it concerns incident responses. I do it so often. So happy that this is something that might be of interest to you. Hopefully you come back for more and more of this content. Hopefully this has been valuable to you. Thank you. Come back again. Struggle Security, where we are normalizing struggling in cybersecurity.